A Spanish company is claiming that they have a one-stroke, 120 horsepower engine that weighs just 84 pounds and has essentially no vibration. Today let's take a look at this, see if it's real, is it really a one-stroke, and does it have a future in automobiles? Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and there's been a lot of different engine designs that have been proposed over decades, but nothing's ever really surpassed the two-stroke, the four-stroke auto cycle, or the diesel. There's been other variations of it, such as the Wankel engine, that have never really surpassed the other ones because of their strengths. But those standard engines have a lot of problems. They're noisy. They're complex, and they set up a lot of vibrations that need to be dampened out. But there's a company in Spain, it's called InEngine, it stands for Innovation Engine, and they're from Granada. The founder, Juan Requena, got his BS in Mechanical Engineering in 2010 with a senior thesis titled Garrido Engine, a New Internal Combustion Engine. By 2011, InEngine was established, had two angel investors, and started work in Juan's garage. By 2012, they had the first prototype up and running, and so yes, they are a true garage startup. Patents have been applied for, developments continued, and today the company has two products. One's the E-Rex, and the other is the Rex B, both in development. That's all a really cool story, but how does it actually work? Now, a two-stroke engine gets twice the power strokes, but the exhaust is much dirtier by mixing oil in with the fuel. Well, as the company presents it, the standard four-stroke engine gets power from only one quarter of its revolutions. It's very efficient, and the exhaust tends to be really clean, but it's very heavy, it's very complex, and setting up those dampeners, typically counter-rotating balance shafts, to dampen those vibrations makes it even more complex and more heavy. InEngine worked to develop an engine that combines the best of both while dramatically reducing the weight and the vibration. In essence, there's two cylinders that are opposing each other with a central combustion chamber between them. There is no connecting rod and there is no crankshaft. These cylinders ride directly on what really amounts to a sinusoidal platform. So as they compress together, an injector injects the fuel into the combustion chamber and it ignites, pushing away from each other and forcing that platform to rotate. Those two platforms ride on a central shaft, which can have a little bit of gear in between them. And as the pistons are forced apart, it uncovers the exhaust port and the intake port. And what's really cool about this is it actually has the ability to have variable compression. That central shaft with gearing on it actually can offset the two pistons where they ride on the platform and create a smaller or larger combustion chamber to increase the compression ratio or not. It offers a lot of benefits, but right off the bat we can see this definitely isn't a one-stroke anything, but really to my eyes it looks like a two-stroke with modifications. There's no oil in the fuel and it has the benefit of direct injection, but without the potential downsides of direct injection such as valve fouling. In fact, the company even acknowledges it's not a one-stroke, but the name was attached to others to highlight the differences between this and a standard two-stroke, and the name is kind of stuck and it's part of their marketing. Again, to my eyes, one of the big downsides would be the, I believe, difficulty in meeting emission standards with the design. Unless you have a more positive or actually negative, more of a vacuum on the outlet to pull the exhaust out. I don't understand really how this is going to be much different than a two-stroke with having a mix of gases in the combustion chamber. I don't see it to be a very positive expulsion of the exhaust gases. But the thing is, is the company is working on meeting Europe's 2025 EU7 emission standards on their E-Rex engine. So they're on track to do that. They've partnered with other people to help them meet current and future emission standards over in Europe. And there's multiple places where this technology could be applied basically immediately. Uh, aviation, drones, 
stationary power generation and marine and it's aviation where the company has really started to develop some test mules and has been focusing more of their efforts providing much lighter weight and good power and ultimately longer range for aircraft but does it work for autos well the answer is yes uh, back in 2021 they actually took one of their engines and put it into a miata and the company claims that the e-rex is 55 percent smaller and 70 percent lighter than any four-stroke internal combustion engine but they're not looking to replace every auto engine and i support that while manufacturers are moving to or being forced to move towards EVs, the internal combustion engine will continue for several generations more and perhaps, perhaps far longer with the development of e-fuels and things like that, carbon neutral fuel sources. But few manufacturers would want to buy, license, license the patent, test, and begin using an all-new engine at this time. Consider Volkswagen or General Motors or Toyota when they already have their engines in spite of the benefits, why would they go buy the license from another company just to develop a mule and develop it for years before finally putting it in a vehicle at the end of what may be the internal combustion engine's life? And the company doesn't suggest it as a matter of fact. They think that their benefits of power, weight, and lack of vibration. They have a really cool video that shows actually a razor blade with a coin on top of it, on top of one of their engines, barely moving. The company's focus in autos is really is the engine as a range extender. And this is where I get pretty excited and very strongly support them. And the general idea here is this rush and this push, and in some case mandates towards full battery electric vehicles is harmful to the environment. The mining it takes to get these rare minerals, the focus on many of these minerals coming from China, as well as in some countries, the labor that's used to actually mine them. It's very disruptive, and these batteries tend to be extremely heavy. So to make a vehicle battery electric only, you're actually making it less efficient because you have to have such a large battery, and that adds so much weight to it. Well, their idea is to have an engine as a range extender. That is, you have a much, much smaller battery that accounts for roughly the 90% of driving that people are going to do, going to the grocery store and going to work and running errands and doing everything else. But then there's a small engine up front that can fire up and power the batteries when you take those longer trips or when you need it. You reduce the overall weight of the vehicle, you reduce the amount of batteries you need in that vehicle, and that means that the minerals you're mining can be stretched out over four or five vehicles instead of just one. I'm really, really a big proponent of this, and I don't understand why more people aren't talking about it, except that one of the big issues why people want to move to battery electrics is because of carbon. And if you have a range extender, even though you're being so much more efficient, it's still putting carbon into the atmosphere from the combustion. But InEngine is addressing that because they're actually looking at using hydrogen as the power source, as the fuel source for their engines in a range extender application. I really see a ton of benefit here, and I think you could end up with less expensive cars, that are much lighter weight, much more efficient, and have the regular drivability we have with the current ICE car anyway. I'm a pretty big proponent of this, and I'm pretty excited about it from that perspective, if they can continue their development and achieve what they think they can. Let me know what you think below. Thanks for being here.